Skies are beginning to become a little bit more sunny out there. And if you notice, that sun is pretty low in the sky. There's a reason for that. The winter solstice is only a couple of days away. It arrives this weekend. It is sometimes called the shortest day of the year, even though the length of the overall day is the same. It's just the amount of daylight that's potentially available. We are happy to have Hunter Miller from Adler Planetarium with us this morning. He's been with us on before via Zoom. It's good to have you in studio with us, Hunter. So let's talk about the winter solstice, 903 Sunday morning, what exactly happens? Yeah, so you started to describe kind of the conditions on Earth that we experience during a winter solstice. So the shortest day length of the year will have just over nine hours of sunlight that day. It also means that the sun will be at its lowest altitude in the sky. So if you think about those hot summer days, the sun high overhead casting those short shadows, very different in the winter time. It'll be low in the sky, casting long shadows, almost kind of feels like twilight all day long. Now, what's happening in space for this to be possible? So this all comes down to the tilt of the Earth's axis. We it's don't not... spin like this, we got that 23. Exactly, yeah. so it's not perfectly perpendicular with our angle to the sun, so that means during the summertime, we're pointed more towards the sun, but during the winter time, and especially on the winter solstice, we are pointed furthest away from it. Okay. And so that is what happens out in space for this solstice to be possible. Here. And so the sun will be directly over what the Tropic of Capricorn at that time. So that, as you mentioned, it's as far south as the sun is in the sky. Um, solstice, it's a Latin term, which meaning like the sun standing still, right? Yep. So yeah. for a few days, it almost appears like the sun's position doesn't change very significantly in the sky as it goes from going more southerly to now going more northerly all the way until the summer solstice. So there may be a reason for us to take some optimism in the fact that, hey, the days are going to be getting longer, the sun's going to be getting higher in the sky. Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, that's why the solstice has been very important throughout history and a point for a lot of different holidays for many cultures over millennia is because it's a celebration of the sun's return, the increased brightness throughout the rest of the year. Now, how far back did mankind know uh, about the seasons and be able to actually determine this is when the solstice is happening? Well, you can think about, you know, these ancient archaeological sites, places like Stonehenge that have been around for millennia. Many historic religious temples and sites are often tracking the position of the sun throughout the year. So certainly by then, they are paying attention to where the sun is in the sky, mm -hmm. and it is a signifier for important times of the year, these big shifts. And it was even more important back then when they didn't have a very obvious predetermined calendar like we have now. It was the sun, the sky, that was determining the times of year, letting them know when to plant things in the ground. It was something that they were keeping very close track of, and so it's a fun connection to our past when we celebrate it. We have short days, but that also means long nights, and for an astronomer... Not that's so good, bad. That's yeah, a not good so thing. bad. What are, what are some highlights that you can suggest to the folks at home that would be easy to, uh, to see on these long wintry nights if they bundle up? Well, I think the wintertime is a great time for amateur astronomers. There's a lot of very recognizable constellations in the night sky. Orion and right being now, the big exactly. One. Orion, the hunter, things like Taurus, the bull, which have the Pleiades in them. But we also have a couple of our brightest planets in the sky right now, with Saturn and Jupiter gracing us in the night sky. So lots of things to see. Um, that are even visible from right here inside the city. I look at right. these right from the Adler Planetarium all the time, um, and even through the light pollution, they shine bright. And I would imagine that at Adler, you've got you know plenty of things to maybe celebrate the uh, the winter solstice or just the things that we can see in the night sky. What do you want to invite folks to come out there to the planetarium to see this time of year? Absolutely, we've got lots of special activities going on for the season. We have special tours of our new exhibit, Stars Aligned, which oh. connects the history of astronomy and astrology, really interestingly, um, as well. Do you believe as, in astrology, Hunter? Well, hey, the, there are very very important connections between how. Um, the sky was tracked by astronomers and how those uh, that tracking was used by astrologers at the time. So okay. I would really recommend folks check it out and see how closely astronomers like Kepler and Galileo were paying attention to astrology back really, then. That's interesting. I did not, so scientists were saying, you know, there may be a connection to Absolutely, that. Absolutely, a very close relationship. It's different than the relationship that we have today, but worth checking out. Outstanding. Well, Hunter, we appreciate you coming in here today and talking about the winter solstice. Uh, it is going to be a cold day on Sunday, but we have warmer temperatures next week. And I'm already, I'm, I'm looking forward to turning the page on the worst of winter here. Thanks for coming in, Hunter. Uh, 